Now, notebook users have been getting to take advantage of the extremely high efficiency of Intel's latest processors in ways that desktop users have not. Ultrabooks are so much smaller and slimmer than previous generation products, but still deliver a very similar amount of power on the CPU. The desktop has caught up. This is the NUC or next unit of computing from Intel. It is a full fledged desktop with a Core i3 processor, two memory slots, an M SATA SSD slot, and wireless network functionality. And as you can see from its size compared to my hand, this thing is freaking tiny. Now because the NUC uses a mobile Intel QS77 chipset and a 3217U Core i3 processor, that means it's got a lot of advantages that it takes from its desktop counterparts, such as the HD 4000 graphics, Intel LAN, and high performance dual channel DDR3 memory controller. So it performs pretty much like a desktop would if you turn the speeds down a little bit, but it should still be plenty snappy. Now in terms of IO, you've got one front USB 2.0 port. The sides of the unit are a beautiful anodized aluminum, so it looks absolutely stunning. The top is available in two different colors, black for the basic version and red for the advanced version that has Thunderbolt instead of one of the other HDMI ports. And on our black version here, you have power in, two more USB 2 ports at the back, dual HDMI, making it optimal for a workstation where you need to have a couple of monitors. And finally, gigabit ethernet, a Kensington lock, and a couple of holes for ventilation. The entire unit itself fits into tiny dimensions, and I hope that you guys are really getting the point that this thing is small. Next, we're gonna show you how to take it apart and actually put in the components that you need to get up and running. The nut comes with full instructions, but if you're an experienced PC builder, or even if you've built a computer or two in your life, it'll probably come pretty naturally, all the steps that you have to go through. So number one is to remove the four screws that are embedded in the rubber feet at the bottom of the nuck in order to take apart the chassis. This can be done in exactly the amount of time you're seeing right now. Due to the stacked design of the mini PCIe slot and the MSATA slot, it is important to install the wireless card before you install your SSD. So all you have to do is remove the screw, move the antennas out of the way, plug the wireless card in at a bit of an upward angle, then you actually push it down before securing the screw, and then finally plugging the antennas into the wireless card itself. Picking an SSD for the NUC is easier than picking a wireless card because with the wireless card, there's some regulatory stuff to do with wireless compliance and whatnot, where basically most ones will probably work, but Intel has a list included with the instructions for the NUC that tells you which Centrino cards are recommended to use with the NUC. For the SSD, we've just kept it simple. We've gone with a Crucial M4, and the installation procedure is pretty much exactly the same as the wireless card. So you take out the screw, plug the M SATA interface in, which actually looks an awful lot like mini PCIe, although they are not the same thing, and put the screw back in on the other side. If you've ever installed memory in a notebook, you're gonna find this is actually as simple, if not simpler, because at least you don't have to fight with, you know, getting under the keyboard or whatever else to access the memory slots. So all you do is line them up correctly. There is a notch in the middle of the memory so that you will not put it in the wrong way. Push it firmly into the slot, and then you'll see that there's actually some wiggle or some play in the memory until you press it down and it locks into place. So you do first the bottom slot and then the top slot much like we did with the mini PCI Express and M SATA slots to ensure that we're gonna be able to reach them. Closing the unit back up is a piece of cake. I actually worried about it for a second because I realized that I hadn't kept track of which way it goes on. It's not quite square for one thing, and there's one side that doesn't have a metal barricade. That's the side that corresponds to where the IO ports are at the back. So you just go ahead, the screws don't even come out. Like you can't even lose screws. It is as simple to build this thing as you just saw. If you've never built a computer before, 
you watch this guide or use the manual itself, I guarantee you, you can now build your very own desktop computer that fits into the palm of your, almost done, hand. That was pretty much it. It was that simple. So the conclusion is pretty much showing you guys what the NUC looks like once it's fully loaded up. So we've got a USB plugged into the front. So this is just a you know, USB drive, which is very convenient if you are using it as a desktop computer. In the back, we've plugged in a keyboard and mouse, although you can plug in a hub, so you can plug in a wider variety of peripherals. Don't feel like you're limited to just three USB devices. Something to note is that while the NUC does come with the power adapter, so this box right here, it does not come with the AC cord. So you'll either have to scrounge one up or get one of the compliant cords that are listed in the manual itself. So don't worry too much about that. Finally, gigabit ethernet and we've plugged in one of the HDMI connectors. All you got to do at that point is press the power button on the top and you are ready to install Windows. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from your favorite e-tailer, NCIX.com.